The Paiute Native American tribe says that the Grand Canyon is one of these few places on Earth where the underworld and the world above meet, where you can go from one to the other without really much effort. The basically completely gone Havasupia Indians taught a very powerful creation myth. Long ago, before mankind, there were two gods, the god of good and the god of evil. The god of good begat a daughter, and this god hoped that the daughter would be the mother of all living. The god of evil sought to destroy this daughter and caused a great flood to go over the land. The god of righteousness built a boat out of a tree to place his daughter in. When the flood receded and the mountains returned, what was left is the beautiful Grand Canyon. It was here that this beautiful daughter started human civilization. The Grand Canyon is a deeply religious and magical place. Anyone who visits there can tell you it's beautiful. It is indeed grand. It is just absolutely spectacular. It's no wonder that this landscape provoked the religious and spiritual instincts of the people that lived here. One of these people was Theodore Roosevelt, the father of the national park and public land system that we have today. He declared in 1909 at the end of his presidency that the Grand Canyon should no longer be used for any kind of mining, lumber, or hunting of any kind. It would obviously later become a national park. An intrepid explorer named G.E. Kincaid decided to take this final opportunity to look for gold in the Grand Canyon. Places like this are obviously perfect for looking for ore, and so he set off down the Colorado River in his boat. While he was scanning the canyon walls for ore, he noticed something peculiar. He noticed a set of steps. The steps were basically completely inaccessible without some excessive rock climbing, but he took his revolver and a lantern and scaled the rock wall. He ended up following the steps into a cave, and what he saw was absolutely incredible. What he saw on the walls was hieroglyphics, not petroglyphs, hieroglyphics. He said they resembled those that would be found in ancient Egypt, but they're not exactly the same. They seemed a little different in style, maybe even a little Eastern in styling. It was very peculiar, but this is just where it began. As he went deeper and deeper in the cave, he began to notice that there was room after room after room after room. He even found a granary where food was processed and kept. This was not just some lowly cave used by some low-grade Stone Age people. This was sophisticated. This was intentional. This was an underground city. Kincaid actually requested help from the Smithsonian, and believe it or not, they ended up sending an archaeologist. S.A. Jordan from the Smithsonian Institute went and explored this cavernous city with Kincaid himself, and they both investigated the site very thoroughly. They found hieroglyphics upon hieroglyphics. They were absolutely everywhere, much like the cities in Egypt, where the Egyptians put hieroglyphics on everything, except, of course, the pyramids, but that's a whole other video. They found pottery, jars, brass weapons, bronze weapons, copper weapons. They found all sorts of evidence that this was a sophisticated civilization, a civilization that understood hierarchy, division of labor, how to grow and organize food, how to maintain an armory. They even found a bunch of mummies, again, resembling the mummies of Egypt, but not quite. Instead of being wrapped in linen cloth, they were wrapped in sort of a tree bark substance, which is consistent with what is found in the area. Obviously, none of the Native Americans mummified uh, any of their dead, as far as I know, but the bark was obviously tree bark that was found in the area. This was a civilization that lived here. They existed here. They clearly had influence and dominion over the region. What these two archaeologists could not pin down was the origin of this civilization. Did the Egyptians send people here? Were they Tibetan? Who exactly were these people? Well, the mystery only deepened when they found a giant statue of someone in the lotus position. The statue was big and reportedly made out of gold. It resembled the Buddha, but it was just not quite. It was in the same position. It was clearly part of the same kind of culture, but it wasn't Buddhist, strictly speaking, but it was oriental looking. 
What we had here was not an Egyptian civilization, but sort of like a hybrid Egyptian-Tibetan civilization, or maybe something that was the progenitor of both. That, of course, is the biggest implication of this find. If this archaeological site is real, if these artifacts do exist deep in the Grand Canyon, this completely changes the way we look at human migration in all of human history. This would make North America the old world. All civilizations started here, which is an insane theory that I don't even hear talked about really in these you know, alternative archaeology circles. But that seems to be the most logical conclusion of the evidence we see from this site. Think about it. This is a civilization that built a city in the canyon walls. Why would they do that? Well, one of the most logical reasons is to avoid a flood. After the civilization survived the flood, they spread out all over the world. I'm not saying I buy this theory strictly speaking, but that is a very plausible one based off of the evidence here. We're talking about a civilization that practices aspects of sort of Hindu and Buddhist spiritual practices, but has many writing and cultural elements from Egyptian culture. It's incredibly weird and again points to the idea that these civilizations had their start in North America. Kincaid and S.A. Jordan strapped many artifacts to cranes and shipped them back to the Smithsonian, where they're being exhibited today. Just kidding. If you go ask the Smithsonian where these artifacts are, not only will they say they never received artifacts from such a site, but they will also tell you that no one under the name of Kincaid or S.A. Jordan ever worked for the Smithsonian Institution. In fact, there's no record anyone by that name ever existed. This whole story looks like a hoax. However, there is a very strong principle you need to understand if you're investigating things like this. If the government says something is true, then it is probably false. If the government says something is not true, then it is probably profoundly true. These brave explorers on YouTube, and I'll put their video in the comments for you to watch, they went and hunted down the location of where they believe Kincaid's cave actually is in the Grand Canyon. But here's the trick. That part of the Grand Canyon is closed off to the public. This is incredibly suspicious. The official reason is for your safety, of course. The government just wants you to be safe. But that logic doesn't even make any sense. I live next to Yellowstone National Park. I can tell you right now, you are one bad step away from ending your life at an acid, fiery death in a mud pot, okay? <laughs> they, and people do. They People die every year in national parks from rock climbing, from falling into volcanic mud pits, or dying to bison, or whatever. People take risks when they visit national parks, and people know that. People are happy to take the risks. Unfortunately, people die, but that doesn't stop the government from closing off every dangerous part of national parks. What this looks like is an excuse. People have even told the government, hey, we'd be happy to go in, you're not even responsible if we die and the government doesn't care. They won't let anyone into this region of the Grand Canyon, even though there's nothing more dangerous about this part of the Grand Canyon than the rest of the canyon in and of itself. When these intrepid adventurers went to this part of the Grand Canyon, they found something highly suspicious. They found what looked like giant metal stakes in the ground. This was not for rock climbing. This was clearly for lifting up and down the canyon heavy equipment perhaps taking artifacts out of a cave, just for example. They wanted to continue and explore further, but they ran into a problem. An Apache attack helicopter was immediately deployed to the vicinity and escorted them out. There was also unmarked planes flying below the canyon rim, which is illegal, and I imagine the only people authorized to do that would be the government. Highly highly suspicious. If the government didn't want us to think the story was true, they should not have put all that heavy equipment on that part of the Grand Canyon, and they should not have sent an Apache attack helicopter to harass our brave explorers. They also shouldn't have taken an otherwise normal part of the canyon and closed it off to visitors. That is highly suspicious. I went from believing the story was a hoax 
to believing that it is almost certainly true. If you would like to watch me try and descend into Kincaid's cave one day, leave a like and please comment on the video. Tell me your thoughts about the story. What do you think about the Kincaid Grand Canyon Egyptian cave story? Do you think it is all a hoax? Do you think it's all made up? Just 1900s clickbait? Or is this the evidence that we have been looking for for the progenitor civilization of the great civilizations that existed before the flood? I don't know. Leave a comment with your thoughts. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to support the channel, visit Civilian Expedition Outfitters. The link for that is in the description. Get yourself a nice little sticker for your Nalgene bottle. Love you guys so much. Have a wonderful rest of your day.